I recently did a video showing the simplest, fastest way to bind and update firmware on ExpressLRS. And in that video, I said that I like to bind my ExpressLRS receivers by putting them in Wi-Fi mode, logging into the receiver with a web browser, and putting my bind phrase into the receiver. And many people said, don't you know, Bard? Well, there's a simpler way. Uh, they said, don't you know, you can bind ExpressLRS without flashing or putting a bind phrase in. I did know that. Did you know why I don't do that? Because there's a reason. So this green blinking LED that you see here is the ExpressLRS receiver LED on this quad. And here's what they're talking about in case you don't know. If you just, wait a second. I just plug this in and it's doing the double blink. That makes me think it has automatically gone into binding mode. That's, wait a second. Are we about to learn something new here? If I just go and bind this. Okay, that's a new one for me. It automatically went into binding mode. That's interesting. Well, let's explore that in a second. What I was going to show you is that if you plug the receiver in three times, what, I, what you do is you plug it in once, you wait for the light to turn on, you unplug it. You do that again, you unplug it, and on the third time that you do it, it will go into binding mode indicated by a double blinking LED. But the reason that I don't do that is this. And the problem with that method is that it does not put in my ExpressLRS binding phrase. Again, if you're new here, the ExpressLRS binding phrase, you can think of it kind of like a Wi-Fi network name, although that's a really bad analogy, but basically all the receivers and all the controllers that have the same binding phrase will be bound together when you power them up. And the advantage of that for me is like, let's say I get a new controller that I need to test out for a review. Uh, all I have to do is put my binding phrase in that controller and it is instantly bound to every single ExpressLRS quadcopter that I own. There is no need to, re to shuffle the binding around between the controllers. Uh, that's really valuable to me. Likewise, if I get a new quadcopter like this one, uh, all I have to do is put the binding phrase in the receiver and it is instantly bound to all my controllers. If you are used to the traditional way of binding where you press a button here and you press a button there and then it's bound and if you need to move it, you have to rebind it, that's okay, that this, the, the three plug method is fine. But for me, I think ExpressLRS has additional functionality that I find really valuable. Well, thanks to ExpressLRS developer Captain Bry for sorting me out here. Uh, apparently, ExpressLRS receivers go straight into bind mode when you first power them up if they're fresh from the factory. I never noticed that before because I don't use the traditional bind method. I use binding phrases. But if that's useful for you, then more power to you. Uh, the other thing that you might want to know is that if you want to reset that functionality, for example, let's say you're about to sell a quadcopter with an ExpressLRS receiver in it and you want to just completely reset the receiver back to factory defaults. The way to do that is to grab this little text string and you would just put that right here in the URL bar uh, of your receiver and load that URL and it will reset everything. And then it'll go back into binding mode automatically. That's pretty freaking cool. I didn't know that. And I'm going to bet that a lot of you didn't know that either. If you value the work that I'm doing here, I'd love to have you as a patron. There's a link down in the video description to my Patreon page where you can sign up to support me for as little as $2 a month. It's cool if you're not ready to do that yet. I get it. It takes time. You need to sort of get around to the idea. And maybe you're just not there yet. But if you are there, I'd love to have you. There's a link down below. The next thing I want to show you is how I actually actually bind and update the firmware on my ExpressLRS devices. There's like 17 different ways to do it and 16 of them are a pain in the ass and don't work most of the time because your drivers or your USB or your CP210 or your pass-through or whatever isn't working. The way that I do it works reliably for me almost all the time and for other people that I pass it on to. It's not radical. It's just like which one of those 17 ones is the best. I'll put a card on screen showing you that method uh, and a link in the video description below and I'll see you there.